Here we go again. It is Monday. Another week has dawned on us. And here we go again. The Late Show, 10 o'clock. Mark the cabbie with you now with a guest whose name is Howard. He runs the joint and he's just had to run off because, as usual, a la Revelation TV, technical problems. We should have Dr Grady on the Skype. That has completely gone kaput. And uh, Howard has run next door to try and find some uh, little photos and stuff that we can put up and uh, comment on from the Israel tour. So, literally, um, I haven't got a clue what to talk about. What should I talk about for the next couple of minutes while Howard is running in and out uh, like a lunatic next door? What do you want to speak about? I've had a good day. There we go. You can send me some emails. <laughs> Someone's whispered in, whispered in my ear. What a great idea. 07781 472847. Email live at revelationtv.com. So, um, you've probably got more idea about what's going to happen on the show tonight than me. But that is, that's what we do here. That's what we do at Rev TV. And uh, I know that we'll get through to the other side. We'll get through to the other side of the, uh, the Sea of Galilee by hook or by crook. But I, I would imagine by the Lord's leading. I'm really looking forward you, to Thursday's show. You cannot miss Thursday's Q&A. We have got one of the biggest names in the, in the Christian world as our guest. And it happens to be my little son, who's six foot three, 21. And uh, hopefully he's watching right now. And uh, I'm looking forward to me, Howard, and uh, Jack Willits, my son, uh, who's back home from his third year uh, in university. He's doing uh, studying languages, and uh, he's just come back from a year abroad in Leipzig and Belgium. Uh, he has got a really deep walk with the Lord. Um, really proud of the, the young little chap. And I don't know what we're going to talk about on Thursday, but we're just going to probably just speak about what it's like to be a, a young guy in the kingdom of God, uh, the pressures of everyday life at university as a Christian, the pressures basically just as a youngster. You know, um, I'm very glad I'm 49 now and I'm not a youngster because it's a tough time to be a youngster, whether you're in the kingdom of God or not. With all the technical stuff, all the technical wizardry and technical, technological advances that we've got now, um, life is very different uh, from what it used to be in, in my era. Oh, I do feel old at 49. So we're going to have a, a really good chat with Jack. Um, I think it's down to an hour now. We're going to bring the Q&A down to an hour. So uh, as Jimmy would say, don't touch that doll. Be here Thursday um, and, and pray for my little son. I call him little. Um, I, I'm not even up to his neck level. He's, uh, he towers over me. So uh, it's absolutely great. I really, really can't wait till Thursday. Um, I had a little game of golf today. I haven't picked up a golf club in five years. And uh, my friend rang me last night. I'm on a bit of a in between a bit as I try and transfer from job to job and, and learn a, a new trade. So uh, I'm in, in between a bit, got a little bit of spare time and uh, it was lovely. It was absolutely lovely. The sun was out, uh, three good friends, really, really good. Went round in 90, haven't picked up a club in five years, went round in 90, kept the same ball and uh, I was really, really chuffed. But do you know what? It, it really showed me that the Lord is there in every aspect of our lives. He, he's there in our busyness. He's there in our uh, downtime and our relaxation time. And do you know what? Sometimes you need it. This, this life is so harem, scarum, helter skelter. It's, there's so much going on. The pressures, it's a lot of the pressures that we have are sub, subconscious. And uh, we build them up in our, in, our, in our own little subconscious, trying to set standards for ourselves and, and, and you know, try and make ourselves worthy. But... You need downtime, you need a rest. You know, the Lord gave us a pattern, he gave us a Sabbath day, not because God, after he created him, everything needed a rest, far from it, but he was just giving himself uh, and creation as a pattern. So take time out, rest, you know, try and chill out. Anyone suffering with inflammation out there, the last little email that popped up from a lady called Jo was just um, extolling the virtues of turmeric as an anti-inflammatory. So anyone out there with, uh, inflammatory problems in your body, turmeric. There you go. Oh, well, the emails are starting to flood through, which is fantastic. <laughs> what a station this is. It's, you can't make this up. Even when we sat down, I sat down, got myself rigged up, and uh, Ellie had rigged me up with all the mic and the earpiece, and Howard runs in. <laughs> no, I want a change of seating. So quick, we've got about seven minutes left. Change the seats, wires in, wires out. It is all happening here. <laughs> Oh, Joan's got a good one. I haven't got a clue what the answer is, but if we, uh, if we do get Grady <laughs> online, I'll ask him. Good evening, off topic. Who's putting the poisons into the jet fuel? Do you know? Thanks. God bless you all, Joan. Joan, I've heard, what is it? Um, 
I've heard they're putting barium and aluminium into these trails that come out of certain planes to uh, spray our skies. And I know many people don't believe it, but I've, I live in northwest Kent and Vicky and I have often stood at the back door and watched the jets flying over. You can see the difference between a, a holiday jet that's off to Cyprus. The, the trail that it leaves behind is thin and is, is dissipated within a minute. And there's certain other planes at times of day that are crisscrossing the sky, making a nice grid, and uh, out comes this stuff. And within 20 minutes, it's enlarged, ballooned, and it just sits there and it covers the whole sky. And, you know, two hours before, he woke up to a clear blue sky, and then all of a sudden, these planes have crisscrossed for an hour and a half, and you've got a milky, horrible, grey, horrible sky. I hear it's barium and aluminium heavy metals that they're putting in there. But who am I to know? If you know, let us know. It'd be great. Right, got one here from Eddie. Good evening. Many evangelicals believe that God has chosen Donald Trump in these last days to be the leader of America. Um, on July the 4th, he said that America controlled the airports during the War of Independence. Uh, the War of Independence was 150 years before the airplane was invented. <laughs> Why would God choose the least intelligent president that America has ever had? All the best from Eddie. Thanks, Eddie. Uh, do you know what? God chooses the weak things of the world to confound the wise, and he certainly confounded the Democrats, hasn't he? Because no matter what they throw at him, that man is literally... He, nothing sticks to him. Nothing at all sticks to him. But it doesn't surprise me, because I do believe, Eddie, that the Lord has put him there for such a time as this. He's a bit of a Cyrus figure, really. And uh, he's doing, he, I, I do believe he's doing God's will. So whatever you think of that man, whatever you think of his, his dodgy um, haircut, says Mark, with no hair, and his, uh, and his orange complexion, um, and his inability to control himself on Twitter, all these things... God's using him. God, I do believe, is using him. And I do believe that, that the mess that we are in in this country, uh, you, can, you can just see that it runs parallel with the absolute jokers that we have in our parliament. Not everyone, obviously not everyone. And there's always, there's always a, a few good eggs in the basket as well. But we are run amok now with people that are determined to bring this country down. And love him or loathe him, um, President Trump is a patriot, and he's, he's only done things that the American presidents, ever since Bill Clinton, have actually voted to do. Every single one of them uh, have voted to move the American embassy to Jerusalem. None of them had the gumption to do it, and he did. You can throw what you want at him. If God wants him there, he'll keep him there. And it, re it really wouldn't surprise me if he wins a second election. Um, the, the, yeah, it, it, it really wouldn't surprise me. I do believe he's doing um, God's will. Absolutely. <laughs> right. Got one here from Tony. Evening, Mark, the uh, DI, driving instructor. Hopefully to be one day. You'll have to get back on those cabbies, you know, <laughs> as, as can't think what else to call you. Yeah, do you know what? I need a new nickname. Well, I'll need a new nickname soon when I've passed, hopefully. Anyway, a question for you. It was for Grady, but he's not there tonight. I'm really hoping he turns up. It says in Genesis that God created heaven and the earth in the beginning. Um, so th does that mean that the third heaven where Christ is now, so does that mean the third heaven where Christ is now or the sky as we know it? Um, and that is God bless from Tony. Thanks, Tony. I think it, doesn't it say God created the heavens and the earth? Plural. Let me have a little check on that one. God he may be bang on there, Tony. But heavens pops in my pops in my brain. Let's have a little look. Ah, in the New King James, in the beginning, God created the heavens with an S, plural, and the earth. So I presume, Tony, oh, why has my little uh, inbox disappeared? I would presume, Tony, that it's all three heavens. Okay, the atmospheric heaven, the stellar heaven, and the third heaven where the Lord dwells and where the believer, the true overcoming born again believer, ends up. Um, so I, I presume it's all three. Right, here we go. Um, got one here from Elizabeth. Greetings in the name of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. I'm sure the Lord will bless this evening, however it ends up going. Every day is a day to praise the Lord, no matter how hard, li how hard life becomes. 
Life has thrown me a curveball right now. But what the old enemy means for bad, God means for good. God bless and keep you safe in his arms, Elizabeth. Thank you, Elizabeth. That really, that really means the world. It is, it is true, Romans 8, 28, God works all things together for good for those who are the called and, uh, and that those that he has chosen. Romans 8, 28 is a real staple verse just to stick on the fridge door, uh, stick, stick wherever, stick it in, in there, stick it on your heart. It really is a staple that you need to live on. My son often reminds me that when I'm, you know, when I'm often uh, kicking off and I've had enough and things are going a little bit pear-shaped, my son always comes out with Romans 8, 28. And uh, it's true, it's true, you know. The good thing about being in the kingdom is that nothing takes God by surprise. So um, he can always, he can all work, always work all things, uh, including the seemingly bad to us, uh, to our advantage and his glory in the end. Uh, but patience is, patience is the key. Um, but don't worry, but God is long suffering. He is very patient towards us. And uh, I'm very glad about that because, well, I'm very glad I'm not God because my patience often runs very dry, very, very quick. <laughs> Melvin, driving instructor, remember, MSPSL, mirror, signal, position, speed, look. Thank you, Melvin, bless you. <laughs> it's funny, when you're doing all this stuff now, you, your brain just clicks into a different mode, an absolutely different mode. Um, shame Dr. Grady, can't be on. Uh, find him, I find him educational, but I'm sure, Mark, you'll fill his shoes when answering the scientific questions I've got lined up. <laughs> I doubt it. Not with an O-level in biology, and that is about it. So, uh, but you never know, you never know. The main man, Howard, has just, Elvis has left the building, but Howard has entered the building. So, uh, we should be uh, resuming normal service very soon. <laughs> oh dear. Hi, Mark, you and my mother-in-law have got something in common. After all, you're 49, and that's exactly her waist size. Jeff, you're on form tonight. <laughs> I feel like Les Dawson with all these mother-in-law jokes. <laughs> I can't believe what I can see. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Howard, as I speak to this camera, looking at you guys, is creeping along the floor with a can of Coke, a glass, and out of, out of eye shots, but he's creeping along now, trying to stay out of vision, and we're going to try and wire him back up any second now. <laughs> uh, I agree, he's been put there by God, and that's from N. Thank you, N. Um, I think he's been put there by God. Yeah, the God, there's nothing, nothing God takes God by surprise, really. Nothing at all. Oh, chemtrails. I do like this subject. Um, got one here from Dave about chemtrails. Hi, Mark, you're bang on about chemtrails. I've been watching carefully the holiday planes. I've been watching carefully the holiday planes leave a gap between the engine and the vapor trail. They do. Other planes, if you look through uh, binoculars, the white trail starts right from the engines. That is exactly what Philip Day said last week, and spreads like fury. By the end of the day, the sky is no longer blue, but a greyish colour. Dave, I do agree, one hundred percent. Listen, I know there's conspiracies all over the place and we can all get on the conspiracy gravy train. But the Bible does warn us that at the end days there'll be great deceptions, a, a strong delusion. Uh, even, you know, the, even the elect, we, we are very open to being deluded and uh, not only disillusioned, but de deluded. And you really have to keep your eye on the ball. And I love prophecy, and I'm very wary that I don't want to get too far on the con conspiratorial bandwagon. Um, but I do believe, believe that is one, and uh, I know Felicity has got a lot of teaching on that subject, if you're interested. Karen. Good evening, Mark. Lovely to see you this evening. Thanks for being there. I've been praying for you and have Psalm 45.7 for you to be blessed by. Loving him from Karen. Karen, thank you for the lovely words. Let's go there right now. Psalm 45, verse 7. Here we go. Great stuff. Right, Psalm 42. Psalm 45, verse 7. You love righteousness and hate wickedness. Therefore, God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness more than your companions. That is beautiful. Let me read that again. You love righteousness and hate wickedness. Therefore, God, your God, has anointed you 
with the oil of gladness. That reminds me of Isaiah 61, that. More than your companions. Brilliant stuff. Thank you, Karen. We do have Howard back. Is he wired up yet? No, he's not wired up yet, are you? I am, mate. Oh, I you am. are? Yes, yeah. You are terrifically wired oh, up. Ready dear. to go. Here we yes. go again. Do you know what? Yes. We had everything planned for tonight for Grady, yes. and these things happen, you know, it's live TV, but I've spent the last day trying to do a, an article for Our Times, uh, the one that's coming out next month, and some of the lovely photos that I took. I did a lot of movie stuff, you know, with the camera, you know, so a, lo yeah. a lot of video. But the stills, I, I wanted to take a lot of stills this time, and uh, so I spent all day trying to organise that. And I had a few ready for Grady's, but when Grady wasn't going to come on, yeah, bless him, um, then I thought, OK, I just nipped round. This was like two minutes before you went live, wasn't it? <laughs> went round to the, back to the edit suite, and I've uploaded all... I think there's about 210 wow. um, stills. I really... I, I, put them on my website, not my website, my uh, Facebook as well earlier. So I'm sorry, but it does give you an opportunity. We, we can talk about some of the locations, if we can whiz through them. They might be in a different order now because they were organised, but when you bring them over, it's a technical issue. They don't necessarily go in the right order. But uh, it, at any time you, you're ready to go, um, I just want to say to our viewers, especially if you were on the tour, watch out because I took many more photos this time of actual people rather than sites. Ah, you know, because okay. I was always into the sites, but it's much more interesting looking at people as well. Especially yeah. their reactions as well, especially the first time as a bit of Israel, because it is quite awe inspiring, isn't it? Well, the thing is, Mark, there was, uh, um, I would say, 90% of the people that came on this tour were first-timers. That's even better then, I'm yeah. glad about that. And yeah. as I shared the other day, um, last week, uh, this time, when we just got back from Israel and Jordan, uh, that uh, 23 countries were representatives uh, across the three buses, you know. Fantastic. One bus was Oriental. No, I'm only joking. <laughs> <laughs> the other one was for America. No. Yeah. 23 different nations and nationalities. That's the same thing, isn't it? Yeah. How godly is that? It is. It's one of those ones. And they together. were so lovely. I know we always say that, but they really, really were. You know, Brilliant. there was only one ugly one. That was me. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was going to be me then. I thought, hang on a minute, he's on form. He's back on form. Right. So we can talk about scriptures we go yep. through, and if you want to interact with us, that's great. Um, because you will learn something. I'm sure there'll be something that you learn tonight. Or, God willing. Yeah. Right, um, they're going to come out randomly, you know, because I don't think the order that I put them in are going to come out uh, in the same way. So it's just one of those things. Hey, it's live TV. Ah, Here we go. Here we bus go. Bus number one. <laughs> you know, had the best bus, of course. That's out of the three. So just uh, on our way, we are from the, the airport where we actually landed about 5.30 in the morning. It's always a tough one going to Israel because yeah. everything's early morning. Anyway, next, next shot, we're on our way to Elat, then we're on our way uh, to Jordan. And here we are in Jordan with our lovely Jordanian guide. Oh, hang on, so we were. <laughs> we missed him. He's moving a bit quick now. Uh, can we go back on that, or is it a bit hard for you? Because otherwise I can't really explain what's going on. OK. No, not getting a response. Frozen. You're frozen. OK. There, there we go. go. OK, on. right. OK, our Jordanian guide here. And guess where we are, Mark? Uh, Kings of the like, P. Uh, doesn't look like Peckham High Street. No, um, close. <laughs> Petra. Petra, okay, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, so we were just about to walk through the whole of the seven kilometres, uh, and then we go to the next shot as well. Just carry on a bit. There you go. This is where um, the, the tombs were built. Yeah. Um, and we're talking first century, uh, you know, sort of the same time of uh, the common era, you know, where disciples would have been alive. This was a trade route. What is amazing about Petra is the colour of the rock, the formation. It, it is absolutely incredible. And there's no place like it. And the next one, just keep going now a little bit. Yeah. And as we go right through from beginning to end, uh, well, I did this the other day, but you'll just see the variations in the, in the st stratosphere. Is that no? Stra what do you call it? Oh, the strata. The strata of, yeah. of the rocks. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, we are running out of uh, order, but that's fine. Now, this is the most important place in the jewel, if you, as it were, of this particular site. This is called the bank. Something it, is, was it the is. treasury. The, the treasury. That right. I, I did catch that. Yeah. yeah. OK. And uh, this is where one of the pharaohs uh, was buried in the first century as well. 
Yeah, so here we go. This is an amazing site, so just we'll just keep rolling these. Uh, lots and lots of people uh, come to this site because it's the second uh, wonder of the world and it's the second most popular, you know. And uh, keep going, yes. Local guide or merchant, you know, so beautiful place. Have you visited this? I've not been to uh, Petra, Jordan. Okay. No, I've only done Israel. Now, this is a, a Roman's ruin, a Roman's ruin, <laughs> Roman uh, architectural uh, ruins that we found. Yeah. Um, we found. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. You were the originator. I think that's Hadrian's Gate, <laughs> yes. And the, the locals there, they said, oh, they took the phone from me when I'm taking these pictures. So I'll take some pictures of you, and I'm thinking, is this the last I've seen in my phone? <laughs> um, and uh, it wasn't. They were a good bunch of lads. Uh, and uh, one of the other sites in, in, in Jordan as well as one of the churches here. My phone's going crazy at the moment. Just ignore it. And uh, this is Mount Nebo. Ah, that's yeah. where Moses was buried, isn't it? Not buried. We, we know, don't know for sure. OK. OK. Yeah. yeah. But this is where he looked across the Promised Land. That's right, yeah. And he could oh, see, there view. you go. He had, uh, he had an amazing view. Uh, but he said, this is it, mate, but you can't go in. No, he didn't, did he? I know. Yeah. Something struck the rock, wasn't it? That's right, he struck it twice, didn't he? Yeah, well, uh, if I was Moses, I think I would have probably done oh, the I same, you know? done exactly the same. <laughs> this is a jackpot. River. And would you remember what happened at Jackpot River? Oh, you've got me there, Helen. Oh, well, it was uh, the wrestle with the angel. It suddenly became Israel that night. Oh, um, right, OK. When Jacob. He, when he got off an injured hip. Yes. He always walked yeah. with an injured hip. Oh, okay. And here we are, quite a bunch of us already. Yeah, he's alone. I think at this stage, there's only uh, two-thirds of the tour started, because some of the others come uh, a couple of days later just to go to Israel. Okay. But this was, uh, in the background there, these are like uh, temples to Zeus. Yep. And uh, there's another one as well, I'm trying to remember, I'm on, doing this on the fly. Diana? Yeah. Yep, could be, could but be. there are lots of places here which are uh, fascinating, really. Again, this was a, a two or three hour hike to get into this. And that's the, uh, what do you call those, amphitheaters? Amphitheater, yeah. Yeah. Uh, amazing, really, uh, that this is still, uh, uh, and what, it's, it's 2,000 years old, yeah, thereabouts? Be. Now, this dear lady, I've got to tell you, there's a little bit of a story here. The little lady on the, on the right, she had the most antiquated camera that you could possibly have. And I said, look, sweetheart, and she was struggling to get up there, so I helped her to get up. And I said, look, I'll tell you what, I'll take the photos and I'll send them to you. So, by the way, if you're watching tonight, sweetie, I've sent them to you by an email, but I want you to reply to that so I know I've got the right email address because the writing was uh, on the wall, <laughs> or off the wall, I should say. <laughs> so I'm not quite sure of your email address. Look at the angle of that particular camera shot from your phone. I mean, Beautiful. it's just amazing. All, all, all the different shots. And this is now uh, our guide, Moshe, who's uh, our Israel guide. And as, as you'll see, as the bus carries through, we cross the Jordan River, and we're now heading up to Galilee. There you go. Look oh. at the beautiful scene. Does oh, it, I love it. Yeah, you'd love it. I, I love tell it. you what. Yeah, I could easily and live there. The, the northern part is just so beautiful. There's probably fish farms there in the kibbutz. And, uh, yeah, just beautiful greenery. You, you can't believe you go from desert to yeah. such greenery. There you go. They're looking a bit more tired today. You look tired on the front right there, Howard. Yeah, <laughs> that's me. And here we are heading for Nazareth. You'll see the sign there on the right. And uh, the, Nazareth, and that's that hill ahead of you up there is where Christ uh, was. They tried to tip him off the oh, edge. Oh, Mount of France figure? Um, no. No, tab Tabor, Mount Tabor. It's where they tried to get rid of him when he w he'd read the scrolls from yeah, Isaiah. Yeah, they tried to throw him off the edge, didn't they? Yeah. And th guess where this is? Could be the Sea of Galilee. Galilee. It's yeah, the Galilee. Stunning. Uh, from the, uh, the Mount of Bad Attitudes. I mean, Beatitudes. <laughs> yeah, OK. So, sorry, mate. And uh, again, looking at it, the Sea of Galilee. Lovely. Yeah. It was so calm that day. It's hard to imagine that you, this, the wind can build up such a storm, you know. Beautiful greenery and uh, the trees are blossoming. Just so, so lovely. This is inside the Church of Bad Attitude, Beatitudes, and, uh, you know, it's, it's rather lovely, really lovely. It's a shame that you've got to have all the sort of uh, 
I don't think those are going to work on our screen. There you go. Blessed are those who are. Oh, Mark. Persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Yeah. Even. <laughs> Good old Sea of Galilee again. Yeah, on a calm day. This was the spot where um, the disciples uh, met Jesus after the resurrection, apparently, on this side. How they know, I don't know, is no. it? No, who knows? <laughs> but, uh, exactly. Okay, this is when we got on the old boat, you know, down, you know, we start singing songs and, you know, well, some of us sing the songs. I don't, I just mime, because they don't want to hear my voice. <laughs> but a great, great crowd again, lovely people, beautiful. And, uh, so, yeah, we did the usual trip. And as I say, if you're watching tonight and you see yourself on there, get in touch with us. Email us live at revelationtv.com or text us on the number that will come up on your screen from time to time. Dr. Laura led us in uh, worship there and uh, then they tucked her away on this little boat. <laughs> Ski jet. Never seen again. Yeah. This was an amazing place. This is uh, in northern Israel where they built uh, a railway, or the British had built a railway uh, crossing over from northern Israel into Lebanon. That was when they were trying to ship things to Turkey. This was around about 1944 or 45. And of course, um, the Israelis took it down because that was too open to people coming the other way. But beautiful Mediterranean Sea. Now, guess where this is? Oh, how would you? Pressing me on that one, I have no uh, idea. Very high up, looking down into a great valley which has something to do with... Valley of Jezreel? Yep. Armageddon? Yes, very good. Wow, look at that. Mount Carmel. 200 yeah. million people. Yeah, well, you could actually get 200 million people on yeah. the, on, in I this particular could, valley. Yeah. This is an amazing uh, scene as well that we're going to see fulfillment of. Now, this is the castle, or the Crusaders' castle, right in the north again, and apparently it was used in the film Kingdom of Heaven. Did you ever see no, that? Never seen that one. No. That is a brilliant film. Honestly, really good film. OK, Kingdom yeah, of Heaven. Some good, bad and ugly in there, but it just shows you what we did as Crusaders, or some of us, yeah. and uh, which was despicable. Yeah, okay. yet some of the others were quite righteous uh, and with the right spirit. This is uh, looking out into the Mediterranean. This, is, this would be the port where the Crusaders would have come in from, uh, from Europe and the likes there. And that's Elijah. Ah, yeah. And what's he standing on? I didn't see. Did no, either did I. There you go. <laughs> he's, he's cut the head off, or, or about to cut the head off, of one of the Baal prophets. Do you remember how many there were, the Baal prophets? that were the false prophets where Elijah had a bit of fun, didn't he? Yeah, with them. I can't remember. Do you remember the story? Yeah, I remember the story. Tell the story, because I think it gives me a break. Well, basically, he, he, he propositioned the prophets of Baal to prove whose God was real. And uh, what was it? He, he, he gave an offering, or a, he asked him to set fire to something. And, Howard, I'm losing track here. What yeah, don't it? worry, anyway. Yeah. You gave me a chance to have a little drink, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so what happened is he was having a bit of fun. Um, yeah. It was a particular day where he said, look, there has to be a confrontation of truth. Yes. Ooh, do you like that? I like that. It's a good banner headline. Confrontation of truth between who is the right God, who is the real God, and who isn't, OK? Now, the Baal worshippers uh, were part of Israel, really, and they, the, they had false prophets, and they were leading the people astray. A little bit like today, if you might say so, there are people changing the laws of God and saying, no, you don't need to do this now as a Christian uh, or, or as a believer in Christ, yeah. uh, whatever they say, <laughs> there is a difference. Um, then you, he's had this particular problem where he's saying, Lord, there's no one worshipping you in truth anymore. OK, they're doing these vile things. So what Elijah proposed to do is he had, uh, um, he built this like sort of Old offering yeah. uh, place, uh, like a, a, what you, a floor of some sort. He put stones all the way around it. He dug a trench and he put water in it, yeah. put water in the trench. And then he also, um, I won't, don't want to jump the gun, but he said to the, uh, the prophets of Baal, right, you call on your God. Uh, and if he answers by fire, yeah. we know who God is real, OK? And so Elijah had a bit of fun. I think he had, his, uh, he had a p picnic with him as well. So he was having a flask of tea and he was munching away on his sarnies. And uh, 
it was, nothing was happening there. The prophets were, hey, you know, Baal, please come and take this offering away with fire. And, you know, a couple of hours later, he said, well, he said, I'll have another cup of tea, if you like, and another sarni. But, you know, can you, can you just, can you shout a bit louder? Maybe your God's deaf. I can't, he can't hear you. So <laughs> he's winding them up. So then he got to the point where nothing happened after several hours. And so Elijah calls on God. He said, well, look, I tell you what, before I do, uh, you prophets of Baal, I'm going to make this a bit harder. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to pour water not only into the trough uh, and in the middle you've got the, the offering. He said, I'm going to put water all over the offering. Yeah. To okay. Make it even more impossible. Even more impossible for this to be all burnt up with fire. Yeah. And then all he did was just turn around and say, Lord God, uh, Yahweh, or whatever he would, he would have called on that, uh, the name of God. You know, yeah. this is an interesting thing. I've got to say, with, uh, we've lost the art of using God's name. We have, very much so. Yahweh, Jehovah, uh, Elohim, or yeah. whatever. You know, if you don't know the name of your God, how can you call on him? Yes. So what do you think? He, he couldn't have just said, oh, God, because they're Baal was a god. Yes. So he called on the name of Yahweh, whatever interpretation that is, Y-H-W-H, Tetragrammaton, you know? Whatever it is, yeah. Okay? Immediately, fire came down and consumed the whole offering. Yeah. This was on Mount Carmel. And what did he do? He got up. You can slow, show that photo again of uh, Elijah. And Elijah just, he, he and his guys... Actually, by then, there was a few more had a bit more courage because yeah, they could see what was happening. Yeah, let's help Elijah. He seems to be on the winning side, you know. Typical mankind, isn't it? And so they took the 500 prophets down to the brook and they... Don't need that shot yet. Took them down to the brook and uh, slew them all. Just yeah. cut their heads off, basically. Wow. I don't think we'd get away with that today, would we? <laughs> yeah. A little bit heavy for Imagine the, the Christians all running down with you. Well, you've been worshipping the wrong God, mate, you know? Oh, no. You know? <laughs> Just take them down. <laughs> anyway, no, God's going to answer by fire one day, but we're not going to have to help him. He's, he says, vengeance is mine, I'll repay, says the Lord. And we know Jesus said, turn the other cheek. And also he said, love your enemies. Yeah. Turn things around, didn't he? Bless those who hate you in person. Yeah, and all of those, you know. Everything's on its head in the New yeah. Covenant, isn't it? Yeah. Literally. So anyway, so that was the story of Elijah, and I hope somebody learned something from that. And if I've made a little mistake, that's okay. So, but the amazing thing is, this guy, straight after he had the courage to actually even propose that confrontation of truth, he runs away because of some woman. He runs oh, to Jezebel. down to, where is it, Beersheba, or was it, or Dan? Was it Dan to Beersheba? You got me. Right, right, right the way down south towards Elat. Yeah. It was just one heck of a run. Yeah. In fact, the caves of Elijah are supposedly found in Saudi Arabia. Oh, are they? Another oh, Saudi Arabian. Yeah. yeah. So they went past the lat. And he ran like stink. In yeah. fact, the ch he ran faster than the chariots. I mean, he was on a move. He was in a right? I mean, he, he, you yeah. know, chariots of fire, maybe that's where they got it from. He asked to die, didn't he? He, yeah. said he asked the Lord just to finish him off. Yeah. He'd had enough. But he was at the brook, wasn't he? And the ravens fed him. That's right, yeah. Yeah. Brooke Cherith, wasn't it? That's right. Yeah. My goodness, you know, it's, a, it's an amazing story, isn't it? But it just shows you what a woman can do. <laughs> <laughs> don't call your daughters Jezebel, just don't do yeah. it. <laughs> that was it. Oh, that, you don't get many people called Jezebel these no. days, do you? Or King Ahab, so yeah. Yeah, yeah that's phased yeah. out now. Yeah. Or oh, Nebuchadnezzar, anyway. <laughs> Nebuchadnezzar. My goodness. Or oh, Azuerus. Yes, Azuerus, yeah. 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 Go on, what was Isaiah's son's names, if we're going to do name games? Oh, dear. If you get this, I'll be very impressed. Oh, Isaiah had two sons. No, 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 I don't. Give me a, a little beginning. Macha. Oh, really? Yeah. And? Macha Shalal Hashbaz. Oh, really? Yeah. My goodness. And Shia Jashub. If you pronounce it correctly, it's Yeah, be very Yashub. careful. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> my goodness. No, I didn't know that. I, I didn't know he was married. We had two kids, yeah. So he, oh my goodness! Yeah, there you go. He never visited us, <laughs> so that's why I don't know. You must be good mates with him. Anyway, uh, let's carry on. God, it's only an hour to put up with us, right? <laughs> oh, 25 minutes now. This is 
19 minutes, sorry. Yeah. Time flies. When yeah, it does, doesn't it? <laughs> You're having fun. In this uh, place where the Crusaders landed, and this is amazing. Look at the size of it. Carry on with this, because hopefully we can see a few more of these. They're all coming. There you go. That, but you see the size proportionately. This yeah. is... This how is... big this dungeon was, or not, or whatever, it's not really a dungeon. But keep going, mate. we're doing well, we're doing well. Oh, this is all. They built things to last in them days, didn't they? They did, yeah. including the women, you know. Now this, any, any clues? Um, not really sure. That doesn't look like the Dome of the Rock to no, me. No, but it's close. Is it? Yeah. Okay. Oh, there's the Dome of the Rock. There you go. So here we are in Temple Mount. Okay. And that's the other ones we were seeing were the... Um, what do you call that place? Oh, my goodness. Anyway, it's uh, the Muslim site, you know. Here you've got uh, the only part of the... The retaining wall. wall yeah. Retaining wall, which is called the Western Wall. Yeah. Or, or uh, affectionately, if I can call it that, known as the Wailing Wall. This is interesting. That guy's T-shirt. Can you read what's on it? I can't from here, no. Can you read it in there? Because uh, You can't read it? Oh, OK. Well, that was useless. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to get our spec savers. It says... London, UK, Leeds, UK, yeah, Manchester, Leeds, Dublin. Yeah, but what's the slogan? Or oh, isn't there one? Yeah, well, he's obviously from England. <laughs> yeah, great T-shirt. Anyway, I remember looking at it. But here you go. This is right in the corner where you go in. And this man's face is absolutely cracking. That's the sort of hairstyle I'm after, really. <laughs> Uncle Albert, thanks <laughs> again. Yeah. This was the, the night of the tall shadows, you know, getting towards sunset. You know, I, I looked about 10 foot tall. Yeah, there you go. Oh, yeah. 20 foot tall there I was. <laughs> Looks like I'm on stilts. Uh, the whole <laughs> Funny old shape, Look, small head. <laughs> Long legs in Long legs. <laughs> OK, but uh, amazing. All the, all the worship that goes on and the wailing for the Lord to return. There you go. That was uh, one of those selfies I tried to do. I'm not good at selfies, mate. Look at the state of me. God, I'm really getting old, aren't I? Oh, we're all getting there, mate. Sheesh. We're all getting there. Got 25 chins and 60. No, you haven't. No, you've got no chins. <laughs> mm. well, maybe. Anyway, that's very nice of you. I'll pay you later. Um, now, what gate is that? That must be a, a famous gate. It is, but I don't remember. Jaffa? It, no, it's not Jaffa, and um, it's not... It's, Dungate? It could be the Dungate, yeah? OK. Because that's... Yeah. But I, I, I missed that one. Yeah, that, there he goes. And I, I didn't mean to take that one. There's a few like that. Where did you get those shades from, Howard? They are so son. over the top. Now, this shot I like. <laughs> this shot I like. So, what, you know, can we go back on that? Yeah. Do you know what I'm doing? I'm just trying something new. Mm. I was uh, taking a shot above my head. Yep. So I've got the camera above my head. And that's the floor of the upper room. Oh, OK. I was trying it. to do an upper shot, but it yeah. didn't quite work. But anyway, yeah, that's very precious. This is from the hotel we stayed in um, in Jerusalem. And this was early, about 5 o'clock in the morning. That looks beautiful. Yeah, the mist is just incredible. Look at that. Yeah. This, oh, that's the Kidron Valley, isn't it? With that's the, um, right. Yeah. Temple Mount. You see the Dome of the Rock, and you see, the obviously, the graves that are in front of that. For that. Yeah. There's the Eastern Gate, just on the right there. Yeah, you'll see it a bit more in, in one of the other shots, a bit distance there. Keep going. At least these are in order, for some reason. Yeah. Yeah. I remember standing right there, yeah. Beautiful. Very good. That's the mosque again as well there. Uh, this is uh, our guy giving us the lowdown and trying to get us all together because there's about 140 of us and wow. not on bus one because of the three buses, you know, about 44, 45 on each bus. Yeah. OK, so there you go. Good old Moisha, bless him. And this is uh, a lot of the people that are on my bus. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I remember standing right there, yeah. Yeah. It's an amazing atmosphere. Yeah. Now... Garden of Gethsemane. Garden of Gethsemane. Well yes. done, mate. Do you know how old those trees are? They they do look 2,000. They do look ridiculously old. They told us... One's like 1,890 years old or something like that. Wow. Yeah, older than the mother-in-law. There you go. This is the church that's there as well. What do they call this church? I can't remember. Yeah. 
two, I, I last went in 2008, so... Yeah, you were to my age, mate. You never remember anything. Oh, I tell you, it's just, it's awful as you get older. Yeah, but uh, you'll see Dr Laura in a minute. Let's have a little look. Not that. That's not Dr Laura. She is. <laughs> Keep going. Yeah. Oh, Eastern there's... Gate. That's it. There's the Eastern Gate, yeah. And what, what's the story behind that gate? That's where the Lord's going to make his entry, isn't it, when he comes back? So mm -hmm. they, they, I think it was the, was it the Ottoman Turks, they filled it in so that he'd have a bit of trouble walking through bricks. Yeah. Now we're back to the Garden of Gethsemane. There it is, yeah. These olive trees, I mean, an olive tree normally looks quite small, doesn't it? Yeah. But these are getting on for 2,000 years old, some of these. Look at this. Look at this. Right, That's yeah. the trunk of one of them. And you normally, you could hold uh, in, in, in your hand the, the trunk of a, a young vine. Yeah. Not vine. Olive. Olive. Yeah. But just so gnarled and old. Just looks like us. There's Dr. Laura. Oh, bless her. You'll see a close up of her in a minute. There you go. Oh. Yeah. I haven't seen her for ages. There's Susan who came with us. Susan Pollock. Who is uh, the Holocaust survivor? Oh, I heard about her. Yeah, yeah wow. <coughs> One of our viewers very kindly paid for her to go. Wow. <coughs> this is where Bethsaida. Yes. What happened there? The Pool of Bethsaida, wasn't it? Yes, that's, that's that right. Where the angel. If you look, the waters. stay that on that shot. Yep. If you look in the middle, it looks like it's sort of orangey. That's yep. seen through to the steps where the, the water would, where they would have sat what, till the water was stirred by the angels, which yep. didn't happen every day. But the people who wanted the healing, you would be there. And it's when Christ went there one day, didn't he? Yeah, that's right. So I think there's um, a wider shot there again. Yeah. And uh, the whole area, it has been unearthed. That looks original stone. That is. They've unearthed that just recently. And this is a Roman road. And it also is in the area where they think Caiaphas's house was. OK. Um, and uh, this is where they think Jesus would have walked along this Roman road yeah. at one stage. Bearing his cross, you see that. Look, Look at, at that. that. So amazing. Yeah. Yes. And this is the Holy Sepulchre Church. Yep, I remember that one. And uh, lots of uh, people visit there, and it's quite packed in there, so it's hard to get some decent shots, but you'll see in a minute uh, some of the shots I got. Amazing dome. Look at the sun coming yeah, through beautiful. there. So beautiful. Huge. A great bit of architecture, really, yeah. isn't it? I remember that. Now, do you know what that is? Is that where they think they laid him or something? Cause I've got a feeling it is, yeah. Venerating him. Yeah. And, yeah. And this is one of the murals on, on there where they're taking him off to wrap him in his... Uh, what do you call that? Uh, linen. Um, wrap, anyway. That yeah, they did, I can't yeah. remember the exact word. Now, you've never been here before. Never been there. This is amazing. This is Latrune, which is the tank uh, museum. And they've got about 150 tanks here. This is the latest tank, uh, which is what the Israeli army uses now. On the front of the armor plating on the, on the top there, what it does, it, or if a, a missile f is fired at the tank, it can recognize that it's been hit, but instantaneously it lets off an explosion from the tank. So it counteracts the force, if you like, and thwarts uh, the intensity of the incoming missiles. Such clever technology. They've sold that technology on. Um, but it's an amazing tank. And they've also changed a few things around. Don't rush, please, because there's nothing to do with the tanks. <laughs> um, thank you. Um, they've changed the technology uh, uh, as well. They've put the engine in the front, so if they, that's normally where the crew would be when they get hit, you know? Yeah. So they've got the crew going through a, a tiny hole at the back. Um, they can get not only the tank crew itself, but they can get 15 other um, wow. never believe that inventory in there. Yeah. yeah, very, very good. So that, there you go. That's, uh, but here we are. You know where that is. I know where that is. That is, yep, yeah, the garden zoom. What happened there? <laughs> There's one place that will always be indelibly stamped on my memory. That, yeah, that was amazing. And it actually looked to the right, Howard. It really does look like a skull, doesn't it? Gold gopher. Yeah, it's ways. gone. It's nearly gone. 
What, all been rubbed up? Just... Yeah, it's nearly all chalked no. away. Yeah. I, I've never... In fact, I didn't take a photo of it this time. Oh, it was, it was stunning in 2008. Yeah. So, 11 years later, yeah. it's um, struggling. It, it's ne yeah, it's nearly all wow. gone off. Yeah. OK. So, this is back to the tank that they use. And this dear guy, oh, bless him, inside... Inside... Where are you going? I can't even tell the story on the other one. OK, I can't move that fast. This is the area where uh, we were looking for lunch one day. So, and then we're back on the road. And we're heading down, by the looks of it, down to the Dead Sea area. Yeah. Amazing hills and uh, mountains there, of course. Dr. Grady would have had fun with all this because of all the different layering. You see that again at the strata? Strata. Yeah. Strata of the rocks, yeah. yeah. You can see the different strata. Now, if it, if it wasn't for the flood, yeah. you wouldn't have all that different strata layers. So it is, like, amazing. This is a, an obelisk that's been made. It's very significant, to, uh, and it's to do with the Holocaust, but I couldn't quite see the connection. It's a, it's a piece of art. I think that's what they call it these days. OK. <laughs> I'm not very into art. No. Well, not like that. No. <laughs> this was an interesting uh, bit of architecture. Uh, that s hole or gap between uh, the, the building, it's just in the front there. And I, I was just grabbing this as I was actually driving, you know, with my left hand, you know. I'm only joking. Um, but this is the modern architecture uh, coming into Tel Aviv. And they've now got a train coming through from Jerusalem now as well. And this is the University of Tel Aviv. Beautiful uh, campus. Lovely Beautiful place. trees again. Stunning. Again, just little bits of artwork, you know, quite, quite engaging, that piece is. Try and work out what it is, though. Beautiful colours in this country as well. Yeah. It's just it's stunning, you know. And believe it or not, that's a synagogue. It's not a factory. Oh, wow, OK. Yeah. There you go. Let's move to the next one. Yeah, back out into the Dead Sea area, looking in the Negev. Yeah, very negative. Yeah. Is that it? Is that all? Any more? No, we got more. Yeah. Any emails that anybody yeah. wants to give a shout on? Here we go. Do. Dear Mark, when President Trump spoke about American airfields during the War of Independence, uh, it was obvious that he was talking about something else, not the American War of Independence. Yet again, the media in this country had a field day, field day trying to make President Trump look stupid. He's confounded them all, and he really is making America great again without the aid of speech writers. The media hates him. I don't understand how people can't see it. Blessings from Maggie. Thank you, Maggie. Carry on or back to the Yeah, photo? carry on. Yeah, yeah. no worries. Um, hi, Mark. It may be an idea. This is about chemtrails from Brian. It may be an idea sometime for someone to take a swab on the windscreen and have it analysed. As the windscreen is so often misted over with what appears to be a fine white powder, although much of this could be pollen, some might be aluminium dust. Shalom from Brian. Good idea there, Brian. Yep, you never know. These chemtrails, they're getting uh, put in the cat among the pigeons. Apparently, the chemtrails are spraying heavy metals, which are used in holographic technology, part of a coming great deception in the heavens. Also, would it not have been easier? Hang on a minute. That sounded off. I thought that was the... No, no, no. The, the... I thought that was the trumpet <laughs> call of God, then. I thought we were about to go up. Little imps in the, in the works tonight. Oh, OK. <laughs> it's all happening tonight, guys. Part of a coming great deception in the heavens. Also, would it not have been easier to sit on for um, sit on for a half an hour of Q&A instead of having a new half hour to fill? Um, <laughs> schedules always change on Rev TV. Yeah, we try. There's there's very good reasons. You know, it always is. Yeah. You know, and it's and if you think you can do better, come and try it. Mm. Yeah. Amen. Especially on our budget. Yeah, I know. I think we're uh, still. I'm, I'm, I think we're twenty or thirty people, right? There's twenty-two thousand people work at the BBC. Yeah, work that one out. Yeah, I know. Proportionately, I'm, I'm surprised we're still on the air because mm. we haven't all died of exhaustion, stress. Yeah, yeah. Go to the top of the emails, Mark. Yeah, we'll yeah. Do. Just because we can get to the bottom of this. <laughs> 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 get what I mean? It's oh. been a long life. 
I'm a day. John here to Howard and Mark. Did you ever found, find out what that mysterious picture was that Howard took in Israel of a weird shape in the sky? Yeah. It was uh, a reflection that was coming through the windscreen. Yeah. And it was um, reflecting onto a piece of metal on the dashboard. I did get it. It looked quite great. It looked as if it was, you know, almost a flying saucer at one stage. Yeah. But, yeah. Here we go. Got there one, one go. from Brian. Only those children of Israel of 20, 20 and under were allowed to cross over the Jordan from Mount Nebo, uh, with the exception of Joshua, the saviour, and Caleb, which means bold. Here's, here's, one, here's one of my obscure takes on the name of Jordan, as the jaws or mouth of Dan, the judge, or God, whereas the waters of the river represent the spirit. Perhaps there is a prophetic message to be found in this incident as Joshua, representing Yeshua mm. as saviour, had to take the place of Moses from out of water or spirit as the rock, the word or Jesus in which the rock which he struck in anger may have been the reason. 20 and under could have something to do with today's date, 20 or 2000 and under 19 perhaps. Shalom and blessings from Brian. Mm. Thanks, Brian. Brian always leaves me... Does he? ..leaves me <laughs> floundering yeah. with his, uh, his ideas and his depth. Well, it's nice that somebody gives some thought to uh, some real things. thought, yeah. yeah. Because God is a God of order, Howard, isn't he? And, and nothing is left to chance with him, even the meanings of it, the names mm. and in everything. He's, oh, yes, it's, He it's always quite... puts a little background exact. story inside, doesn't he? Yeah. You know? Right. Here we go. Uh, I attended this Israel trip and saw myself in the program. I'm glad I attended and I enjoyed oh, every bit of the trip. Okay. I've been telling people about it and they want to know what next, when will you be organising the next trip? God bless you for your wonderful work you're doing from Rose. Yeah, probably 2050. <laughs> <laughs> Only joking, no. <laughs> Joy, Howard. I've, I've worked out that literally, I would say about seventy percent of what you say is often a joke. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's always a joke. Take me by surprise. It's all a joke. <laughs> it's it's all some a people would think I'm a joke. You know. <laughs> it's all right, mate. I'm laughing at myself these days. There's nothing much else I can do after sixteen years of um, being a fall guy. Yeah, yeah. But, but but God chose the foolish. No, He has. Yeah, yeah, to confound the wise. Yeah, He yeah. really has. Yeah. So LBC, look out. <laughs> Got me. Right. God bless you, your channel. Today I heard a song that I haven't heard since I was young. It is, you might know this, Howard, I've never heard of this person, Lena Martell. No. Lena Martell's One Day at a Time. What a beautiful way to find my way back home. Bless you. Oh. Oh, Lena Martell, how? Tell her, no, I don't. that name? No. No, you got me. Listen, I can just about remember Leslie's name. Who's that? <laughs> oh, that's right, who's that again? <laughs> She's flying back tonight, bless her. Flying yeah. back to um, Spain. Oh, is she? Yeah. This will cheer you up. Yes, please. From Judith. Yes. Howard, you're amazing. Please don't change. <laughs> it's too late. Simple as that. Oh, we've got a minute and a half and it's all yeah. happening. Oh, I need good. a short one. I need a very short one uh, before I let Howard... Um, here we go. Mark and Howard, thank you, Howard, for all your hard work to keep our wonderful memories of the land alive. A shout-out to Dr Laura yeah. for leading great worship. God bless all on the trip from Sue M with a little kiss. Um, turmeric, this is from Guy. Turmeric is controlling my inflammatory problems. We mentioned oh, this yes. just while, yeah, while Howard was out. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Guy goes off the uh, off the uh, deep end with that one Okay, at the end of that, but uh, God bless you, Guy, anyway. Stick to We've got about a minute right? left now, so do you want to close in a minute? No, no. Way? Yeah, okay. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay, well, first of all, I just apologise again that Dr Crady wasn't able to join us. Uh, bless him, and he has, goes out of his way uh, to actually make sure that he can give us the time, but the technical issues, for some reason or another... Uh, and new every time. This, the, why we couldn't get him tonight was totally new. And it meant that the Skype wasn't even working anywhere in our building, nor in Spain. So apologies uh, to you, Dr. Grady, if you're listening, and to our viewers. Mark, thank you very much for being with us again tonight. Loved it. Loved and, it. Uh, yeah, it was really happening. good. And thank you for being part and patient with us as well, to all of you at home. God bless you and keep praying for us because we've got a long way to go and we are going to get better at this uh, when we get up to 30 people. Okay? God bless. Take care. And I want to say good night. I'm just about to... Uh,